friends, editing Desiree here. I wanted to pop in real fast and let you all know, for most of this video, I cut off like the top portion of my head. And I could have reshot the entire video, but I felt like the information that I put out there, I was just kind of riffing. I didn't have notes or anything. And I didn't want to try to do that again and potentially miss something or leave something out that I thought was important the first time around. It also would have felt really inauthentic to like re-record the whole thing over again. So I'm really sorry for the crap like framing, but I hope that the information is useful to you all the same. Hey friends, my name is Desiree, AKA Mama Friendly, and I do all sorts of videos on my channel from cooking videos to planner videos, vlogs, hauls, homeschool videos with a Disney twist, a little bit of everything. So if any of that sounds like fun to you, I hope you'll subscribe and join me on my YouTube adventure. Speaking of homeschool videos, that's exactly what this video is. Every year around this time of year, I like to do a homeschool haul of sorts where I show you guys the sorts of materials that I bought for the year to come, how I'm planning on using them, what sorts of themes or um, skills we're planning to target in the next year. And every single time I put these videos out, you guys seem to love them. They're videos that do typically very well. They get lots of views. But it's almost guaranteed that even on videos that are years old, and by the way, I'll be posting them in the corners throughout. So if you want to catch up on them later, I'm also going to have them in the description box below. After you've watched this video, you can go and check those out for ideas. I always get comments, even on the older videos, saying, my son's also nonverbal, but I have no idea where to start. Or my kid, we're really wanting to homeschool, but how do we begin? Where do we get started? And I try really hard, as much as I want to help, I try not to even answer these comments because when it comes right down to it, there are so many factors to consider when trying to answer a question like that. Every child is different and that's not even taking into account children that might have unique abilities, kids that might have special needs, every child even typical children, every one of them is different. And you have to really consider the child, what they like, what they don't like, their strengths, and maybe, I don't wanna say their weaknesses, but maybe the areas where they're not as strong. You have to consider all those things before you figure out how you're gonna approach something like homeschooling with them. So I'm not a professional anything. I'm not an educator. I'm just somebody who's been homeschooling my son's entire life. And that's another thing that I always wanna make sure to make clear whenever I'm discussing things like how to get started in homeschooling. We never really did anything different. Like from the time my son was a toddler, I was already introducing educational games, puzzles, apps. Like I was trying to do everything from an educational perspective that might not work for everybody. Maybe your child is older and they've already been in public school. You're going to have a different experience than I did. So all I can do is speak to my own experience with my son and tell you what we did. And maybe with that information, it gives you a little bit of a, a jumping off point to start your own research, or maybe it gives you ideas that you didn't have that you could try to implement with your kids and so on. So if nothing else, I hope you get a little bit of information from this video that you can use in spite of the fact that I am not a professional educator. So like I mentioned, my son from before, way before he was school aged, I always made it a point, and I know that this is not realistic for everybody, I know that this might not be everybody's experience, but I always made it a point that any toy or game that he bought or that I bought him or that was gifted to him was educational, that it had some sort of educational aspect to it. We've never been one to get him toys that just light up and make noise and don't actually like require engagement from him. Everything that he has ever <laughs> used has been educational in some way or mentally stimulating, mentally engaging in some way. And as such, he doesn't know any different. So those are the sorts of things he gravitate towards even now at almost 12 years old. He'd rather get a puzzle than like, I don't know, a video game or something. And it's not to say video games can't be educational. It's just that's what he's into because that's what he's always been around. We're also not, I mean, 
it really depends on your definition and I know that there are some people that are very gung-ho about the labels and the definitions etc but we've always been what I refer to as unschoolers so a lot of times when people have already been in public school or a private school in that sort of a setting they're used to, okay, instruction is from such a time to such a time, we're gonna have an hour of language arts, an hour of math, an hour of science, then a break, and, and everything is just super structured. And maybe that works for your kid. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing whatsoever. Again, this is all about tailoring the education to the child's needs. But we've always preferred a more loosey-goosey approach so not as much structure, not as much kind of, no, you have to sit down and finish this because you have not accomplished your hour of math yet today. It's more about finding opportunities for education in day-to-day -day things in a more natural setting. And also it's about figuring out what your child is into and using that interest to build an educational foundation around it. A great example of that, my son is super into Disney. Not so much like the characters per se, but the Disney parks. He's, I think obsessed is not too strong a word. He's obsessed with the Disney parks. So on this very channel, I have 40 or 50 at this point, different videos showing uh, sensory activities, cooking activities, uh, math, etc. that can be done with the theme of different Disney rides, different Disney pavilions. This whole last year we did a different Epcot World Showcase pavilion every single month. And so you can take that interest, in this case Disney, and develop an entire curriculum around it just by getting a little creative. Um, again, this is not for everybody. It's not an easy thing to do necessarily take help where you can get it. Lots of curriculums already exist, maybe around your child's particular special interest. You can check out my videos if your kid's really into Disney. Um, but places like teacherspayteachers.com is a great resource because you can in fact pay teachers to create curriculum for you if they have not created one that works for you already. I've even heard of people using ChatGPT these days to say, okay, well, come up with an eight-week curriculum for like a nature study, and AI is giving them full lesson plans. So take the help where you can get it, but the point I'm trying to make here is take what your child's already into and spin it into something that's educational, but that's also going to intrinsically hold their interest because it's something that they are already interested in. Because we started so young, a lot of the things that we started as like building blocks were things like Preschool Prep, which is a company that makes books, workbooks. They used to have an app that had like games on it, sort of like ABC Mouse Lite, if you will, because it wasn't quite as developed, quite as like immersive as ABC Mouse. ABC Mouse is another great option though. We did do that one for a while. What I like about ABC Mouse is that there is some structure to it in that it builds on itself. So like, they're not gonna skip ahead too many things. They're gonna make sure you have this skill down before you move on to this one and so forth. So in that way, if your child is somebody that likes using their tablet or using a computer to learn and they prefer a little bit more structure, ABC Mouse is a really fun way to do that. And I think they go up to like second grade curriculum now. But we did preschool prep, we did educational apps, things for helping handwriting, things for helping with spelling. Um, there's a game or a company called Endless, I'm not sure what they're called actually, but the apps are like Endless Math, Endless Numbers, Endless Wordplay. And it's all just things like that. It's things like spelling, it's things like counting and addition, and your child doesn't even realize that they're learning these things because they're just entertained with the little monsters on the screen that are bouncing around doing stuff whenever they touch the right answer. I guess when it comes down to it, yeah, for the most part, the way that I teach my son is by tricking him into learning, which, you know what? It works, and it might work for your kid too. Also, puzzles. My son happens to be again, pretty much obsessed with puzzles, and that's not gonna be the case for every child, but puzzles are great for fine motor practice, they're great for logic, for problem solving, and you can get puzzles themed to pretty much anything. We have puzzles that are like, 
American Sign Language uh, themed. We have ones that are math themed and it's like you have to build these things according to what's going on in the in the subject. So you're learning the subject, but you're not even realizing it because at the end of the day, what you want is to build the puzzle. So that's what you're focused on. And all that other information is just getting stored in your brain as like a secondary function. So if you do have a younger child, yeah, the preschool prep series, great place to start. Lots of different products that we are still using because my son loves them. You could also go to places like Target, Barnes and Noble and get um, grade specific workbooks. So that's another way that you can kind of build up on skills if that's the way that you want to go about it. This one in particular is Common Core Standards. So it'd be the same sort of education that they'd be getting in a public school. But you use your workbook, you go through it, and you know that you've developed all the skills that you're going to need to get through preschool, for example. Maybe your kid doesn't like workbooks and you need something more hands-on. So what we like to do is we have, for example, a big old bag of animals. <laughs> we use these animals for counting. We use them for sorting. We use them for matching. We do sensory activities with them where once a week they end up somehow in a vat of shaving cream and my son has to dig through the shaving cream, get them out, and give them a bath. So with that one thing there's a plethora of activities that we're doing and he never once had to crack open a workbook to get all of these skills. Continuing down the following your child's interests thing. Um, my son's also very into YouTube and he watches videos that he's been watching for the last 10 years. He doesn't want new things, he wants the same old things. So if you know that your child's into a particular character or a particular show or something like that, look around because you might find that there are educational resources themed to that particular character or that particular show and that's going to be super helpful i can't tell you how many workbooks and reading books etc we have that are disney themed my son's super into disney as i've already mentioned baby signing time this is a channel that we've been watching on youtube for a thousand years now they have a full-blown american sign language curriculum even for adults they made books once upon a time. So this is all stuff that he's already into and now we can use it for education. So again, it's always about, if you can train yourself to keep your eyes peeled for educational opportunities, that's going to be the biggest make or break as far as having success homeschooling your child. There's ways to find learning in everything. That's one of the reasons why I insist in all of my homeschool videos to include at least one art or sensory activity and at least one cooking activity. When it comes to art and sensory, you're not only exploring sensory needs, which every child, every person has, whether they have special needs or not, everybody needs this sensory input to help them regulate and feel their best but also you're getting creative, you're doing fine motor stuff usually because you're writing or you're drawing or whatever the case may be. There's problem solving involved. And so you're getting a lot of different learning from that one activity. Cooking, same thing, science, the chemistry of cooking, the different phases that things go through as they cook from liquid to solid, for example, uh, temperatures, Measurements, now we're talking about math, measurements, fractions, measuring out ingredients, you need to be able to convert sometimes. Uh, if we have three teaspoons, what else can we use instead? We can use a tablespoon. These are all important things, ways of learning math and science, but also it's an important life skill. You need to be able to cook for yourself, and so what better way to do that than by practicing? If you are gonna go for like a preset curriculum, and there are tons of them out there, religious, non-religious, um, just anything that you could think of, it exists, I promise, trust me. Uh, don't be afraid to break it up and get different pieces from different grade levels if it's necessary. Maybe your child is a whiz at reading but needs a little more help in math. Don't be ashamed or don't think that you can't do exactly that. Get a higher grade for reading, get a lower grade for math. Just because they're in the third grade, you're homeschooling now. That doesn't mean anything. They can definitely do fifth grade reading if they want to, and they can definitely do second or first grade math if that's what they need. They'll catch up soon enough, and it'll be a lot less frustrating for both of you if they're doing the work that suits where they are right now. If your child is receiving therapies, whether they're in occupational therapy, in speech therapy, 
even behavior therapy, our behavior therapists work on academics all the time. You can use those things as a guide for ideas to do at home as well. For example, in occupational therapy, they're going to probably practice writing if your child needs it because occupational therapy does work on fine motor skills, on things like grip, they work on sensory things. So you can make sure that you have a good repertoire with your child's therapist, that's important anyways, and ask them for suggestions. What should we be working on at home? Remember, your child's only in therapy, what? an hour, two hours, three hours a week, if you're not working on those skills at home, it's going to be much more difficult for your child to generalize those skills over different settings with different people. It might become something where it's like a rigid thing. I only do this when I'm in occupational therapy. I don't do this anywhere else. And so what was the point of teaching them if they're not able to do it when they need to. Point being, use your therapists as a guide. They are professionals and even if they're not educators, they obviously are helping your child with something that your child needs. So you might as well use their input to give your child more of what they need right here at home. And the last thing that I want to suggest, I left for last because I know that it's not necessarily an option for everybody, but it is a great option to have. And so it's something that I wanna put out there for you to consider. We had a psychoeducational evaluation done for our son. It was covered through a homeschooling grant that he receives here in Florida, but these are very pricey. I've heard them go as high as like $4,000. So again, it's something that not every family might be able to have access to. Sometimes insurance will cover them as well. So that's all going to be obviously a very individual matter. I have a video on our experience, exactly what it went and what they were measuring and so on. So I'll post that up here and I'll have it in the description box as well. But basically it was a two or three day situation where educational professionals and psychologists had my son do different assessments. They asked him questions, they played games with him. They really got to know him over the course of these two or three days, but using all these standardized tests as well, and they were able to tell me, these are the skills he has. These are the skills he needs help with. These are the ways that we taught him that he seemed to really retain and get the most information from. We were able to get his attention best this way. We kind of lost him when we did these things. And it was an incredibly in-depth report done by people that do nothing but this. This is literally their job, is trying to find out how exactly do these children, do any children learn? So if you could get a report like this done for your child, it will be an immense help because you won't have to trial and error a bunch of different things to see what works. They'd be able to tell you off rip, this is what your child will definitely thrive with in this sort of an environment. These are the sorts of things that completely turned them off and there was no way to get them back after we did these things. So it's a very, very helpful tool if you are able to access it. So that's pretty much all the information I have for you today. Like I said, all I could do was speak to our own experience. So hopefully the information was helpful in some way. If after all of this, you still have specific questions, I can try my best to reply and like get you an answer. Honestly, it would probably be easiest to do that by video rather than typing things out because I tend to be a little wordy as you've noticed. So the easiest way would probably be to contact me on Instagram and I could do an Instagram story to answer your question in case other people might have the same question or we'll figure something out. But if you do want to leave a comment, by all means, please do. I will read it. I will do my best to get back to it and give you the information that you might need. And remember, if you're going to homeschool, it's not going to be easy, especially at the beginning, but nothing good ever is. The fact that you even care to seek out videos like this to try to make it easier for your kiddo just goes to show what a great caregiver you are. So give yourself a little bit of slack. You're doing amazing. I want to thank you so much for being here and watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, I hope you'll please give it a big thumbs up. I'd also love it if you would subscribe and click the notification bell because I post at least three times a week and I wouldn't want you to miss a minute. Thanks so much again for watching. Bye!